Welcome everyone to day two coverage of HP Discover. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante, who's the co-founder of Wikibon.org. And uh, we're excited to be here for day two of wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage, exclusive coverage here at HP Discover, live in Barcelona, Spain, across the pond from the US here, finding out what's going on with HP out here in Europe. Again, this is an extension to HP Discover in the US. It's the European version. Much bigger, Dave, and, and exciting day one. We had an exciting packed day yesterday. You can go to youtube.com slash siliconangle to get all the, the footage that we had yesterday. It's all up online right now, uh, highlights. Uh, uh, Dave, we've got, we've got a surprise guest here, not on the schedule, uh, so we're going to forego our normal kickoff, because we said everything that needed to be said yesterday on our kickoff and our commentary yesterday. But uh, day two, we're going to kick off with Jerome Labat, CTO of the Software Group. Excited to have you in. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we we love having. Uh, we're excited to squeeze you in. One because uh, we're kicking off the day uh, to get technical, but more importantly, you're the CTO in the Software Group. We've had uh, George Kadiva on, Cube alumni, uh, legendary executive. We're big fans of George. We think he's a fantastic executive. Um, and uh, Dave and I always say, software is the key to the future. And HP has traditionally been an amazing hardware company. Um, software has been kind of in the hardware, but now you're seeing with software defined everything, which is the buzzword at many levels, but at, you know, at, a, at a technology level, networking and, and so on, there's some serious software powering some of these new, new technologies. So excited to have you on talk about uh, the software role and also more importantly, the cloud since you've been involved in the cloud. So uh, first, share with the folks uh, your job. You're the CTO of the software group. You've been involved in many of the technologies within the cloud group. Uh, so explain to the folks kind of what your job is and, and your role and how you fit into the machinery of HP because you got, you know, SAR has been on before, we've talked to the cloud group, you got the software group, which also includes big data. Sure. So how does it all fit in? What, you, what do you do? Explain to the sure. folks. So, you know, I've been with HP about a couple of years, three years now, and the last year really been working with technologies. And we have all this great asset from infrastructure all the way up to software. And when we talk to our customers, one of the things they like to see is a full integration between you know, the, the fundamental machinery pieces that are fully automated, you know, software enabled, but also how do you then operate those systems in conjunction with your, your applications, the workloads that you have to deploy on top of your data center. And that's where really software comes in, is to help you build, deploy, and operate you know, those workloads, those complex workloads and applications in any kind of fashions you want, you know, in your private environment, in your traditional data centers, or potentially in a public cloud or, or managed cloud. Uh, the, the hybrid world. So realizing this vision of the hybrid world. And that's so, what really solves. So I want to just, since we were just, before we were kicking off, we were talking briefly about some of the things. I want you to, to explain to the folks out there the realities or, the, and, or debunk the myths that it might be out there that HP's kind of not in the cloud business. Uh, you know, some may think HP's really not in the cloud business, but, and you don't have a working cloud, but you've had many versions, cloud scaling on the old days, cloud, all this cloud stuff. But you know, bottom line, are you guys in the cloud, but are you shipping a cloud right now? Sure. Like, give us a state of the where we're at and, and clarify so you, that. About a couple of years ago, you know, HP came out with this vision of the hybrid cloud, and we very early on put our position there that we knew that a customer will leverage the resources available in a public environment, and we see a lot of the new workloads like mobile applications going into the public cloud. But very early on, we also saw a return where the workloads had to come back into the private environment, into behind your firewalls, because of security, data constraints, uh, compliance. And so as a result of that, what we really discovered is that we needed, we needed to create a bridge from traditional environment to this new cloud or public cloud environment. And as a result of that, all the work for the past two years have been about creating solutions in software that enable that bridge, that creates that bridge. And uh, if you saw the result on our Forrester wave, you know, we were n nominated number one in private cloud by having delivered real, you know, the, a set of products from infrastructure all the way to software. Now you don't have to use all components all the time. You can actually buy software, you can buy infrastructure, you can compose your cloud as you go and you can drive the evolution from where you are today to where you want to go. 
So leveraging the cloud in the future, yet protecting your assets and your environment. So give us an example of a, of a customer that's using the cloud that could be representative of, of the broader market opportunity. Who's, who's using the HP cloud? That's an example, a use case of. We see, we see a lot of financial institution, healthcare, we see a lot of companies in Europe that have been very, ado adopt, very early adopters in this, in this notion of hybrid environment, in the ability to leverage existing resources, but then present them to their end users and IT services in a self-service self fashion. So if you think about cloud, you know, the true cloud or the true essence of the cloud is accessing resources through a set of APIs. The reality though, what we're finding is, not everybody is ready to go and build applications or provide resources through a set of APIs. So we had to find a way to evolve to it. And what happened is by creating a layer of software that sits on top of your infrastructure, that sits on top of your management layers, you could actually expose you know, the services from IT in a catalog. And so what really happens with the cloud technology is an evolution of where the business and the IT business is going into this notion of you know, IT as a service or IT as a broker. <coughs> So when you're interviewing people, prospective candidates to bring on to your technical team, um, what do you tell them when they ask you, Jerome, what's your vision for HP software? Where are we going? Sure, I mean, a couple of things we do. One is we have the foundation, so we're going to continue absorbing and learning from you know, the ankle biters, the, the, the startups, the guys that have the new ideas that move a lot faster. But on the other hand, we're also going to bring you know, new thinking, new ideas. And one of the key ideas that we have going forward right now is how do we use data? I mean, we all heard about big data. And it's great to have all this amount of information you know, coming from all the systems, the, the logs and everything else. But what do I do with it? And how can I leverage it? So one of our uh, next set of activities going forward is truly leveraging the set of information and see how can I take this data and better operate my systems and my environments. So for example, I can better operate you know, my environment by having insights or predictive insight on what I can see on my log files. You know, if, I, if I have a better tool, a faster tool to, to really intercept and understand my log files. I could potentially enter you know, a service request automatically by just looking at what uh, the human behavior is by, by doing a search you know, on, on, on the ticket search or system search. So the vision is to put data at the heart of virtually everything that, that you do, is that right? Or that is absolutely is that right. Overstated? And we, we, we just announced Heaven you know, 2.0 with a set of new engines and components and revision of the components that really are going to enable us to, to drive you know, how you operate IT in, in, a, in a new fashion and how you use social collaboration, insight, you know, information or social information I should say or even human information, besides just machine information. And how can we bring those two together to change the way we operate at the data center or response to IT services? Yes. So IT Haven looks like a very promising development platform. It looks like it's you know, going to compete in the space with the other you know, big data OS guys, or maybe not the big data OS, but the platform guys, mm -hmm. and appeal to developers. So that, that piece is clear. I wonder if we could talk about some of the traditional businesses though, because if I look at your career at Intuit and Oracle, two companies that had to go through a transition from sort of legacy on-premise into whether you call it on-demand or uh, 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 software as a service or even platform as a service, so you've got some experience mm -hmm. doing that with, with other companies and, and clearly HP faces that same challenge. So from a, from a technical perspective, what are you trying to achieve um, first of all, is that correct that you're trying to tra transition I into more of a, a, a software as a service type mm -hmm. environment? And technically, what does that require from a platform standpoint, architecture, you know, skill sets, et cetera, tools? Sure. I mean, so we are definitely moving towards you know, the software as a service and the approaches there. Mm -hmm. um, and from a technology perspective, you have to think about your applications a little bit differently, but it's, all, it's not an all or nothing. What you're finding is over time, you still have to basically support and reinforce the base and the core. So we have assets today that are running on premise. And the question is, how can I extend those into a SaaS environment? How can I leverage a SaaS environment? And again, there at the application layer, at the pass layer, what you're going to see is a hybrid model. Not everything is going to sit in the public cloud. Not everything is going to sit in a private environment. You're going to have to evolve. And I would say, I would argue that it's not just a technology problem. It's truly a, a people process and technology problem as you evolve and transform. Um, the mentality and the way you operate in a, in a SaaS environment or you know, in a very agile environment, a flexible environment, which is what those technology bring in, changes how you think about the problematic. You don't have a month cycle to release a product. You have to release a product in weeks. 
you have to release you know, component in production in less than an hour, for example. So it's a very different behavior. So it's not just the technology, it's how can I leverage the technology to change the processes and accelerate my delivery of solutions. So when you talk about the people in process, you're talking about <clears throat> Both within HP and all those, obviously correct. extending onto your customer base. As right? you saw yesterday in the main stage, you know, the, the our you know HP on HP projects is really about leveraging our technology to accelerate you know our business processes, even internally, leveraging sales capabilities. Right, so I want to push on you a little bit, okay? Because I, I get that, and I, I talk to any IT practitioner to tell you technology is the easiest part. It's people in process are the hardest part. Okay, but when you're a 110, 115 billion dollar company, and a relatively small piece of your business is software and your CEO has said, listen, we're not really going to make acquisitions except small acquisitions until we pay down our debt. And I've asked George Kadifa about this, I've talked to him on theCUBE and in other places. Okay, so you don't have the, the luxury of, of doing a tons of acquisitions, um, so you got to do this organically, so that's why the focus on people and process, obviously, but look at Oracle. Oracle 1995 said, all right, we're going to change the game, we're going to go buy all these technologies. Mm -hmm. um, and other companies, said, IBM did something similar, so for, can, can so how does HP become a prominent software player, because it's huge upside for the company. Can people and, and process get you there? Does there not have to be a technology component that aligns you with a, a lot of the growth areas in the market? I'm, I'm sure there does, but and, it's, and what are those growth areas, really is my question. It's, it's cloud, it's big data. Mobility. So big mobility, so security. I wonder if we could talk about, if you could talk about that sure. a little bit, some of the, the key initiatives that your organization is driving that ultimately will turn into uh, uh, software being a larger proportion of HP's revenue. Sure, I mean, if you look at the evolution right now, just like software engineering processes, you know, our technologies allows us, as they are today and what we've been releasing in the private cloud, allows us to accelerate, speed up, you know, our delivery of software. That's one example. Moving to agile, you know, moving to continuous build and delivery. I mean, some of the work we've done around the OpenStack environment, you know, where we do continuous delivery, continuous automation, continuous integration. So those are all internal processes enabled by technology. If you look at a new product, Agile Manager, for example, that you can get you know, online for free, you can go trial this, the, the application. That's kind of the forefront of this new you know, way of doing development, for example. Um, on the big data front, you know, you've heard you know, yesterday our CIO talking about using our technology such as Vertica to, to really change the game on how we do supports of you know, our system and PC clients, for example, that are going out, changing and rethinking our data warehouses you know, using those technologies. Haven would be an example. And Haven, leveraging the Haven technology to do that. And I think that's really a key, is we are implementing in-house, you know, what, what we're saying. So that's one aspect, that's the technology aspect. I would say on the, on the process aspect, if you talk to our, you know, enterprise services organization, they talk to a lot of customers. They do a lot of transformation projects. And they are also learning and internally transforming, and transforming with our customers. And I think that's really one of the key assets from an HP perspective, is the breadth of what we can have access to in terms of information, knowledge, especially when it comes to transformation. You know, one solution might not fit all, but from a knowledge and learning perspective, what you can see, you can apply patterns, and you can reuse the same patterns over and over. So I think the, the breadth of what HP can help with really puts us yeah. in a unique position to drive and help our customer transform, because not everybody's going to go at the same pace in that transformation. Jerome, I want to ask about uh, OpenStack. I mean, we talked about it, um, I mean, first of all, on the cloud side. I know it's very difficult to explain the cloud vision because you guys have a lot of, uh, the way you architect it, it's build, and, build and, and operate and then consumption, kind of two different That's factors. Um, and talking to SAR, SAR, we get that message. And it's not always like a product number. Right? <laughs> the software's involved in that. Um, which brings me to the, to the data center conversation. We were just on a crowd chat yesterday and um, about Gartner Data Center Conference. We were covering that last night late. And um, you know, the talk of the, of, of the Gartner Conference is you know, the data center of the future is going to be a total hybrid model. You know, private cloud really doesn't exist and that's kind of the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the meme being kicked around. I mean, essentially just a data center extension, but so given your data center background, I want you to talk about why OpenStack is so important to CIOs. Why not just buy Amazon? Amazon looks great, they're, doing, they're kicking ass and then knocking down the infrastructure as a service market on the public cloud. Developers love Amazon, sure. um, but <laughs> as some say, you know, Amazon's not a nice fit for the enterprise. Many different legacy issues and compliance, et cetera, et cetera, and, and I'm sure you, you know, go into detail. Sure. So, 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 but given, given the momentum of Amazon, why are CIOs and folks in the enterprise excited about OpenStack and what, what is going on with OpenStack? Is it there, is it falling apart, is it growing, is it coming together? A lot of people are worried. They, they're worried about will OpenStack be stable? 
sure. A lot of questions there. Yeah, just pick so your pick your <laughs> buffet right so, there. So, um, <laughs> from a, from an Amazon perspective, it's not an and an or. You know, it's not an or. It's an and. You know, you you really have to be able to leverage the resource pool that you need for the type of job you have to do. Yeah. And so, what we see in our customer is really about choice. You know, we know we have we have to support choice. We have to support heterogeneity when it comes to deploying workloads. If I want to develop a new application quickly, I might use Amazon services. I might actually use you know the HP Cloud services. And so, it's a choice. Uh, from an open stack perspective, it's it's in, a mom, it's in a momentum right now that's really kind of accelerating. And what we see is uh, a lot of customers are implementing and testing and, and playing with the technology. And if you recall, you know, two years ago when we launched our vision of the hybrid cloud, one of the components we talked about, you know, reference architecture or an architecture that's allowing you to port, you know, your workloads from your existing environment sitting in your private infrastructure or an environment sitting in a public infrastructure or managed infrastructure for that matter. If you had a way to access those compute resources in a com you know, consistent fashion over and over using standard APIs a la OpenStack, then what you're doing is you're really solving what I would call application portability, where now you can redeploy your application in a consistent fashion across any of those resource pools. Truly so, achieving choice. So what you're getting at, if I can just summarize, is potentially OpenStack plays to the, the trend around service cataloging, orchestration, flexibility, because essentially it's a building block model, right? It's a right? building block for your infrastructure. It's another component tree that you have in your system, and from a cost perspective, it's a choice. OPEX or CAPEX. Yeah, decide. I mean, one of the things Dave and I were commenting on, I'd love to get your opinion on this, we feel that OpenStack is at a vulnerable point right now because it's growing so fast. Some say redlining its engine of growth. And there's no real leader in OpenStack, and I think you guys don't get a lot of props in the fact that you guys were part of the founding team mm -hmm. of OpenStack. Rackspace kind of takes most of the, the glory there, um, but HP actually incorporated, mm -hmm. helped, and Veery Singh, who's no longer with the company, and others, uh, and I've talked with you guys about this, were there from yeah. day one. Absolutely. Um, so you guys, you know, you know, folks out there, you know, props to HP. Um, so let's expand on that, so you there. Uh, one of the things about Linux in the old days that made Linux really great was there was a rallying cry and then the consolidation of the momentum all mm -hmm. formed around IBM. Mm -hmm. IBM put the billion dollars down and was the anchor. Mm -hmm. Is HP going to be the anchor for OpenStack? I mean, well, we, you know, Rackspace is not a software company and they're, you know, they, they're, they're box guys. They're building, building uh, hosting. Yeah, I mean, we're, if, if you look at the, the efforts you know, over the past couple of years, you know, our public cloud is running on top of OpenStack and we had the great learning there. And, and early on, what we saw is, you know, maybe not every customer has the capability, the power to go and, <laughs> you know, deploy, customize, and work with an open source project at that, at that level. And you guys are still committed to OpenStack heavily. Absolutely, absolutely. 100%. 100%. And, and you want to be that anchor tenant. And we would like to be that anchor tenant. And uh, if you look, and, it, and, and, guess, and we also understand it's about choice. Yeah, yeah, and true. And so at the end of the day. But the community, the community is a lot of investment. You got Mirantis out there doing very well. VMware just did a deal with them. Sure. Um, customers are looking at OpenStack as a nice bridge to the future. Absolutely, I think it's an open door. It's, a, it's an alternative to, to the existing solution. Um, we are demonstrating, you know, through the, through the internal of you know, running OpenStack and so to also supporting OpenStack for, uh, helping our customers. You, know, you saw the announcement around CloudOS based around you know, the OpenStack technologies yeah. to really demonstrate that vision that we had early on about this hybrid delivery model and this consistent architecture. And we believe that that's really the trust. And as our customers start to leverage and deploy production workload outside of yeah. the context of dev and test, you're going to start to see that you you know, know, accelerating. We, we are very bullish on OpenStack, uh, um, even though you can <laughs> kind of pepper you with the questions here, but um, we're very, very fond of what's going on there. We were big supporters of it, but we were Right? We worry mm -hmm. that you, know, you get these industry standard groups and it kind of falls apart as people start land grabbing in the sharp elbows when the dollars start hitting the table. And there's growth. I mean, we are seeing yeah. well, open stack momentum go move into production, although it's not scaling yet. But, but it needs some muscle, as you were alluding yeah, to. Yeah, before. We're trying to find those points. Yeah, where's the muscle? Where's the muscle coming from? And, and I think I think that muscle you're going to see that you know as we're rolling out more and more solutions and more and more workloads and, and diversity of workloads gets deployed into the OpenStack clouds, you know you're going to start to see a, an acceleration. Um, this is really no different than what happened with Linux. You know, there was some support from the industry, but that's, there's also a, an upswell ground. If you look at one of the shadow of OpenStack, is as fast as it's growing. But on the other hand, that's the power of the community and the acceleration of validating, you know. The, the mission of OpenStack. Well, Linux had some, some motivation, right? There was, you know, if they didn't come together, they could miss the opportunity to actually be relevant. I think that was a key driver because well, at that time, it was all Unix guys driving the OS there and open was great. Um, so I want to ask you about Amazon. And you know, the commentary we say about Amazon, it's the tidal wave that's coming in. And the question is how much 
will the wave go inland mm -hmm. in the enterprise? And there's clearly, and you made a comment, it's not an and or or. I wanted you to expand on that. I mean, Amazon is, people are using Amazon for test and dev. I mean, it's nice to put stuff out on Amazon, but no one's really rushing to Amazon on the enterprise to put data out there and some other things. They're using it as a developer framework, um, but clearly the, the model of Amazon's open uh, integrated stack, how, they, how they're uh, building their cloud, is very attractive mm -hmm. to developers, it's, sure. it's DevOps. I mean, and it's a dev box, it's instant on, it's there all the time, and you can do, you know, very quickly get your product out there. And you see actually some workloads, you know, running in production, yeah. so it's, it's there. I think from an enterprise perspective, what you're seeing is a balance, is a learning experience. Going out there, seeing how I can accelerate. It's actually driving more of a agile behavior internally, so it's also, you know, enabling the transformation internally on how you build software. But from a reality check, when it comes to operating a workload, you know, that transcend you know, a public environment, a managed environment, and then your existing infrastructure, and you start to build those bridge, what you find is it's not just about the infrastructure anymore. It's about the completeness of the infrastructure plus the software yeah. that is surrounded it for, for better operation and tracking. You well, know. that's why I like how SAR and you guys uh, architect, architect that build and operate as one module kind of component highly cohesive, and then you kind of have the consumption element That's over right. here with managed cloud and public cloud. I think a lot of people don't understand that yet, but um, I think Amazon is that force, I mean, the, of, of change, kind of forcing OpenStack that, hey, you know, let's move from the insiders pushing the buttons Absolutely. and making things work to how do you make Amazon scalable? The, the consumption model is key. It has to be there, and actually this is a pressure on top of IT, because right. IT has now to become the broker and produce its own services as a consumption model. And the choice is going to be, do I expose it through an API, which would be the modern way of doing it through a cloud. you said earlier, everybody's not ready to do that, but or that's clearly the direction, you know, right? Exactly, but, <laughs> but then I also have to reuse the existing assets, and you yeah. know, what I invested in for the, for the past 10, 15 years, and actually those assets you know, bring the revenue into the company, so I cannot drop those. And so the question is, how can I, in a sense, surround those assets and, and create enough automation and orchestration around those assets so that I get the experience of the cloud, the self-service, the catalog experience, instant on experience with assets that exist, and then also bridging, bridge, bridging and bringing in this new world, you know, so that you can start with a new development environment, you can start with new agile processes and transform how you build application, deploy, and even operate. But remember, 90% of your workload runs in the existing environment. That's what we see in the majority of our customers. Yeah, and then, of course, come back, to, end. Come back yeah. to HP software strategy, there's a piece of that, which is, of course, then utilize things like, like your big data platform to find new opportunities right. and new revenue growth. If I had to simplify uh, your software strategy, I, I envision sort of on, on one side the pillar of, of security and governance and compliance. You guys have great products there. Mm -hmm. On the other side, the pillar, it seems to me to be you know, with OpenStack and cloud and cloud automation, and then you've sort of got this you know, legacy software business around uh, uh, IT service management that you're transitioning more to a software as a service mm -hmm. model, you're modernizing that. You kind of got autonomy in the secret sauce of idle and autonomy, which is sometimes looks like magic, mm -hmm. it's quite amazing, in the middle, and then up top you've got this big data platform in, in Haven, which is really the future growth engine. Is, th is that a fair picture that I'm, that I'm drawing conceptually, and what's missing there? Yeah, so, so I think there's a couple of pieces. Uh, if you look at the software assets, you know, left to right, I'm going to have, as you say, I have all the data platforms. So Idle, Vertica, those are the core engines, you know, that are actually the Heaven platform, the foundation of the Heaven platform. And then you're going to have a sort of assets around security. So from, you know, code management all the way to, you know, intrusion detection on the network, so the IPS device and all the way up. And then we have two big poles, one about application development, you know, facilitating, accelerating how you build, deploy, and test actually applications in a, in a development life cycle. And then you have a set of assets around uh, actually operating, deploying your workloads, operating, monitoring, you know, knowing what to do when a defect comes in. And you talk about service manager, that's the one that wraps the system. Now, that's, you know, the existing assets. And what we are, as you say, we're evolving those into a SaaS world. But the other thing we're doing is we're trying to inject a new approach. So for example, if you look at monitoring in a traditional fashion, I'm just listening to things, I'm just putting probe and you know, connecting and listening. In the new data world, I can actually look at log and machine data at a pace that I was not able to do that and actually archive so much information in the background that can maybe have better insight and be more proactive and actually start to look at analytics and proactivity of behavior in the system and do machine learning and change the game on how I monitor system, on how I operate system. 
And you can apply that to system, to applications, to platforms, and different Do you guys have your own IP in that area? Because we're very, we very bullish on Splunk, and we obviously saw what Amazon recently announced with Kinesis, which can play into some of the Redshift stuff they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, real-time data management is a huge opportunity, in a way that no one's ever seen before. So, can you expand a little bit more? What I'll, IP I'll, do you have? I'll do a plug for the session this afternoon. And okay, then, uh, give a plug in. Yeah, do so, the plug. So you know, please, please go and uh, and, talk, and listen to George Kadifa and his presentation, where we're going to basically present, you know, the, the new vision and the approach. Is he going to talk about machine learning? Uh, we'll talk George, about is what George we can Kadifa do. going to talk about machine learning? About I want to see that. With, uh, what we can do with, uh, <laughs> with the engines and what what you know what really you know this Heaven platform can do for transforming how we think about operation okay. and actually service management too. IT, yeah, ITSM is changing the game. It's not like the traffic cop it used to be. It's more platform. You know, Dave and I were commenting yesterday, again, on the Gartner uh, data conference uh, thread late last night was, you know, the notion of platform wars are coming back to the enterprise, and that's mm -hmm. a consumer trend. Right. You saw the platform wars really be more of a consumer. So, again, another data point around the consumerization of IT. Well, um, it's really about simplification. It's not just consumerization. It's how do you access yeah. those services in a so easy way to, you Service know, cataloging, exactly it's just right. all happening. Yeah. It's all happening as we had hoped 10 years ago. Um, so I got to ask, on that trend, I mean, we're all seeing that, you know, kind of like broke, you know, data broker, service broker, the IT broker, and all that stuff's happening. But I got to ask you, given your background in IT all those years, uh, and now at HP and the cutting edge with the cloud stuff and how you guys are doing it, I want you to, to, to share with us, I mean, take your HP hat off for a second, sure. put, your, put your industry guru hat on. What is, in your, in your definition, software-defined data center? What does that mean? I mean, I mean it's, it's an elusive term, it's still kind of a, a moonshot, if you will, it's a destination mm -hmm. to, to a vision. So SDNs clearly is, we heard Bethany Mayer yesterday going into great detail around how network virtualization is changing the game uh, at many levels. So you got sure. SDN, then you got software. So you know, software-defined is kind of like a, a buzzword now, but it is a, a vision, it's real, it's, it's a good trend, but what's your definition? Sure. What is software-defined data center? I mean, if you, if you look at, you know, taking the hat off and thinking about you know, the day-to-day -day job of an IT operator, what do I do? You know, I match a set of resources with a set of demands from a project or from you know, users. And at the end of the day, what runs is a connection, so an intersection between that demand you know, and that, those set of resources. So software-defined data center is basically the ability to take a software piece, a component, or workload, like a, and, and, and be able to you know, characterize that workload and then just plop it into this infrastructure and say, give me the resources I need to run this job without having people involved. And so really that, you know, software defined data center means that I'll be able to drive the allocation of resources in my infrastructure dynamically by looking at the descriptive of the narrative of that, you know, that, 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 that workload or that application. And in essence, that translates into all the you know, necessity and all the components that you have. For example, in infrastructure, we talk about SDN. You know, I can develop my network routes based on the characteristic of that workload. You know, and then you go up the stack, you know, what would I look into a pass in a modern parse environment where I dynamically you know, di distribute my workloads across the pass layers. Okay, so that, that's cool. Uh, so I want to take it one step further. If you believe that ITSM and these like, the service management stuff you were mentioning becomes proliferate, continues to proliferate, if, if you believe that, then, then you have to then go to, okay, that means there's going to be some automation, there's going to be some uh, eliminated roles, if you will, job, not saying you know, people's jobs but per se, but roles in, in the IT value chain, right? So if the, what roles will be eliminated by, in, by this innovation, and it's, it shifts somewhere else, so that's not the discussion, so yeah. what, what roles will be eliminated by this new platform automation? And two, if that's the case, what legacy tools are eliminated. Sure. If this new functionality that creates uh, that, that new, these new roles being eliminate, created, eliminated, what legacy tools go away with it? Yeah, so, so one is from a support perspective, as long as you have human in the system asking for services, I think you'll need support. So I think you'll <laughs> need some tooling and you'll need some capability. The house on how you deploy the service and support the services might evolve and this is where big data is coming in. However, from, a, from an, you know, what I really see when you talk about the job and the description, I think you know, the, more mundane, John, the more mundane activities will, will go away. But you know, in the short, it, it'll, just, it'll just evolve. I was just seeing our next guest. Can we we'll sure. continue? We'll, we'll wrap up on that, on that point. So no, but specifically, like, people are holding on to legacy stuff. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to get at is if, why fight for the legacy stuff if the roles go away? It's a, it's a you know transformation. So it's like, let's, it's a transformation and evolution. Again, it's the, it's the end, and it's the business value of what you have in play and what you invested. So you really need to protect, you know, what you have and your investment, and then you know acquire the new and okay, learn the new. Okay, Jerome, we got to go because we went over time. Great conversation, <laughs> but I want to give you the last word. Put a bumper sticker on the uh, on the cloud vision from a software perspective. You know, on the on the back of the car, what's the bumper sticker say around HP's cloud? 
the cloud that the enterprise relies on. <laughs> okay, we'll be back with our next guest. We're going Thank to talk you. big data with the general manager. We'll be right back after this short break with our next guest, this is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Thank you. Going to Disneyland. Going to Disneyland. Yeah. I mean, these guys are great. Um, I think this is a revolutionary forum. Uh, up till a few years ago, I'd never seen this in my entire career. Uh, these guys are great interviewers. They're spot on, they're sharp, they're funny to work with. And uh, they just ask great questions, so it's, it's a real pleasure to be on the queue. It. It's really great. What's so neat about it is it's like real-time discussions and also just being able to have people share their views simultaneously. So I'm, I love it. I think it's really fun. It's a great way to you know, get the message out and to have a dialogue. This is a fantastic way to have the conversation with guys who know what's going on, uh, who can you know kind of scratch below the surface, who can you know respond to what's happening right now on you know a, a Twitter feed about maybe some technology that's new in the marketplace, and respond and have a conversation. So it's a way to you know kind of uh, demystify what's going on for a lot of folks. And uh, for me as a marketing guy, I'm also you know really keen on the huge community that uh, has built up and follows uh, you know every single every single uh, uh, post that you guys have got so it's uh, fantastic irreplaceable actually it went really really well I mean the thing that I really like about the cube is you guys get it. I mean bottom line is we can talk about high level strategy we can talk about execution we can talk about competitive and market and it you know what I like is the uh, interactive banter back and forth plus the fact that uh, you know when I think about some of the conversations we have they're not only deep they're not only rich but the audience themselves will really come to benefit from those conversations also I think the cube you guys always have very thoughtful questions really insightful comments and it actually makes for a really fun discussion I, I want folks out there to understand the depth of technical inspection that goes on with, with you guys. It's, uh, it's deeper than you know, most analysts we talk to, right? I mean, so we roll up our sleeves. We'll spend a half a day on hot new technology instead of the you know, PowerPoint idly that goes on you know, a lot of the time in our industry. So it's, uh, you know, it's, when you get a perspective from the queue, that is, uh, you know, that's as good as a validation. Thank you.